Hi, and welcome to How Humans Heal. I'm Dr. Donnie Wilson. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the five ways that HPV and leaky gut are connected. And the reason I want to cover this is because it's not a well-known connection. It's likely not something that your doctor told you about. And yet it's really important to address in order to fend off HPV and protect yourself from high risk strains of HPV to prevent them from causing HPV related cancers such as cervical cancer. So are you ready to dive in? First of all, I want to make sure you understand what leaky gut is and understand exactly the ways that it's making you susceptible to HPV and how we can then address it. Okay. So first of all, I want you to understand your digestion. What's happening with our digestion is we're eating our food, we're chewing it. And what should happen is we should digest our food with our digestive enzymes. And in fact, part of the job of the intestinal cells is to make sure that our food is fully digested and that only our nutrients from our food are getting across the intestinal lining into our bodies, right? If you think about the intestines as a tube and the walls of the tube are made up of these intestinal cells and our, as our digestion digests and our intestinal cells digest our food, the nutrients can go through the cells and into our bloodstream to go to our body to keep us healthy. Well, what ha can happen, and it's actually very common, in fact, I would say that we all have some degree of leaky gut, either mild, moderate, or severe, depending on our exposure to the things that cause leaky gut. Well, here's the things to think about. Leaky gut is caused by stress exposure, whether physical or emotional stress. This could even be an injury increases our likelihood of leaky gut, as well as our exposure to toxins such as pesticides on food. And certain medications cause damage to the intestinal cells, as do certain things in our food, like gluten, is known to increase leaky gut. What's happening is it's damaging these set intestinal cells and making it harder for our body to keep up making more of them. Now, the body naturally makes new intestinal cells every few days, but the surface area of the intestines is as big as a tennis court. So if you imagine, it's, it's a lot of work for our body to continually make more intestinal cells to make sure that we have a healthy intestinal lining. And if we're, we have these stress and toxin exposures, it becomes harder and harder for our body to keep up. And so we end up with these microscopic holes or leakiness between the cells. And also what happens when we're under stress is we don't digest our food as well. We don't make as good levels of digestive enzymes. So when our, our food is not digested well and it's the undigested food can get through between the cells, not through the cells, but in between them, it leaks out into the space outside of the intestines where the immune system is waiting, ready on guard to protect us from foreign substances. And the immune system sees these undigested food particles thinking it's a virus. It tries to protect us from the food. This is how we end up developing antibodies to our food. I'm specifically talking about IgA and IgG, which are delayed food sensitivities, different than a food allergy, which is IgE mediated. These often, IgA and IgG, we don't realize it's happening because it's happening over days to weeks. But what's happening is it's creating inflammation in the digestion, which makes the leaky gut worse. And that inflammation could go anywhere in the body, including into the nervous system, causing anxiety and depression, to the skin, causing skin rushes. And it can go to the vagina, making us susceptible to infections like HPV. So one of the ways that HPV makes us susceptible to, or one of the ways I should say leaky gut makes us susceptible to HPV is because leaky gut increases inflammation in the body, including the vagina. And research shows that inflammation in the vagina increases risk of HPV. So one of the ways is increasing inflammation. A second way the leaky gut makes us susceptible to HPV is by causing nutrient deficiencies. And this is because, as I mentioned, the food, food is leaking through as food particles and we end up not absorbing our nutrients from our food. So now we're not getting that iron, the vitamin D, the vitamin C, the B vitamins. Instead of the nutrients going through the cells, the food is undigested and we don't get the nutrients from it. 
And so we end up with nutrient deficiencies. This is well established in the research that having leaky gut is related to having nutrient deficiencies. And when we don't have enough nutrients, we're susceptible to infections, including HPV. In fact, this is the third way that leaky gut makes us susceptible to HPV is because our immune system decreases. So when we have nutrient deficiencies and inflammation, as well as just generally with leaky gut and stress, our immune system goes down, making us more susceptible to all kinds of infections. In fact, people who have more severe leaky gut are susceptible to sinus infections, bladder infections, you name it, including vaginal infections like HPV. So this is the third way that leaky gut is connected to HPV is because it affects our immune system. Did you recently get an abnormal pap smear result and test positive for HPV? Then I'm glad to connect with you. I'm a naturopathic doctor and midwife, and I specialize in helping women to address abnormal pap smears and get HPV to negative. And I would love to invite you to join me for a free online workshop. It's gonna be a one day, two and a half hour workshop. I'd love for you to come. And this way I can teach you what your pap results mean and what are the steps you can take to help heal your cervix and get rid of HPV instead of just wait and see if it gets worse. So I look forward to seeing you at the workshop. The fourth way that they're connected is because with leaky gut, there's very often imbalance in the gut bacteria for some of the same reasons. Because when we have high stress, high toxin exposure, high gluten exposure, those things all disrupt our gut bacteria as well. And when the gut bacteria become disrupted, right, we need a healthy balance and diversity of our gut bacteria to support our immune system, to make nutrients. And when they get disrupted, not only does it increase leaky gut, but it also increases the release of toxins into our bloodstream. And when those gut bacteria are imbalanced, it causes an imbalance in the vaginal bacteria. So an imbalance in the gut bacteria causes a direct imbalance in the vaginal bacteria. And there's research to show this, that as we, we see those two microbiomes in communication, again, the microbiome in the gut is connected to the microbiome in the vagina, and they influence each other back and forth. So if there's uh, issues in the gut, including the gut microbiome, it's likely to cause imbalances in the vaginal microbiome. And when that happens, it increases the risk of high, high risk strains of HPV and cervical cancer. And the fifth way that they are connected is because of the toxicity level. As I mentioned, when the bacteria are out of balance, we have an increase in toxin production from bacteria that produce toxins. Now combine that with leaky gut, we have more of those toxins leaking through the intestinal white lining, getting into your bloodstream, increasing toxicity, more work for your liver. And as there's increased toxicity, it it's also increases your risk of HPV and cervical cancer. So these are the five ways that leaky gut and imbalanced gut bacteria end up increasing your risk of HPV and abnormal cells, not only on the cervix, but also vaginally and other areas of the body. So this is why I would say it's so important to address your gut health. In fact, I, would, I see cases where if we only try to go after the virus and we don't pay attention to the gut, then we may temporarily see that virus go away, but it ends up coming back again. And I look at those cases and I say, what are we missing? And what we missed is we missed addressing the gut. So please don't overlook the importance of addressing your gut, including if you don't even have any digestive symptoms. Now, a lot of women I talk to and I say, how is your digestion doing? And a lot of times they say, oh, maybe they have nausea or bloating or burping or gas or constipation. And we go, oh, wow, okay. Clearly there's something going on with their digestion. But there's many cases where women will say to me, oh, I don't have any problems with my digestion. It feels fine. And then we go ahead and run a food sensitivity panel because to me, that's the best way to identify leaky gut is with a, a very high level, accurate food sensitivity panel. Please don't just do any food sensitivity panel out there. They are not all created equal. I run a very specific food sensitivity panel through my office. You can get it through my website. That's the 
one I recommend to do because I want you to have the right information to be able to make decisions about your diet and the severity of leaky gut. So we run a food sensitivity panel. It shows us how, how severe is the leaky gut and which foods do you need to avoid in order to help heal the leaky gut. And by doing that test, then we actually find out for a lot of cases, oh my gosh, there was leaky gut going on and the person had no idea. Because a lot of time, in 50% of cases, leaky gut does not create digestive symptoms. I'm going to say that again. In a lot, lot, more than half of the cases, people have leaky gut and they have zero digestive symptoms. So please, even if your digestion feels okay, make sure to do this high level, professional level, accurate food sensitivity panel so that you can really find out is our leaky gut, how severe, which foods do you need to avoid? Because otherwise, a lot of times people are randomly avoiding foods without knowing exactly which foods their body's reacting to. And then follow my protocol to actually heal the intestinal cells because leaky gut can heal. We can actually get those intestinal cells to recover. We can then get the gut bacteria back on track. We can drop the inflammation. We can address the nutrient deficiencies. We can reduce the toxicity and boost your immune system. So we can address all of this. This is why it's so important to know is because as we address the gut health, we can then absolutely decrease the likelihood of HPV being present or coming back because now you know what to do to maintain your gut health and your vaginal health all at the same time. So I teach women how, all about my protocol to heal leaky gut in the Say Goodbye to HPV program. I also talk about it in the Heal HPV workshop and the Kickstart program. So if you're wanting to learn more and you want to follow in the this, in this st footsteps of all the women who I've helped, then I encourage you to please join me for the free workshop and think about signing up for one of the programs so that I can guide you to fully heal leaky gut, address these underlying reasons why you're susceptible to HPV and help you to get to freedom from high-risk HPV so that you're no longer at risk of cervical cancer or any of the other HPV-related cancers. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me today at How Humans Heal. If you are new, I invite you to subscribe and even send me a comment and post a review. I really appreciate all of you listening in and look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of How Humans Heal. Thanks for listening to How Humans Heal. If you liked this episode, leave a rating and a review. And for more resources, visit drdonnie.com.